So this helicopter is basically your HQ for the game. <laughs> Boss, I know you haven't been back long, but I prepared a list of missions for you. Open your eye droid. I've taken the job offers Diamond Dogs has received and made a list of those I want you to consider. Which ones you accept is your call. The objectives of the missions I've added are prisoner rescue, facility sabotage, and high-value target elimination. Probably all a walk in the park for you, but they should help you get back on your feet. I put the mission details on a cassette tape. I like Refer that. If you decide to accept the mission. We'll receive GMP for completing missions, and extracting soldiers and prisoners will boost our ranks. Building up Mother Base is the first step to achieving our goal. If that means wet work, so be it. We're gonna have to get our hands dirty. I hope you're rested up, because we're not stopping. Not until the pain is gone. The future of Diamond Dogs is in your hands. We're counting on you, boss. Alright, so we got a couple missions, but before we jump into them, uh, we, we ended up leveling up our R&D team just enough to make some stuff. Yay! Uh, yeah, so the two teams we have right now are just the R&D team and the support unit. Um, everyone's rank F right now. Uh, but yeah, once uh, you level up your teams enough, they'll eventually unlock like new functions as well. The R&D mm -hmm. team can eventually start developing stuff other than just the weapons you carry with you into missions. Um, and the support unit, all they can do is send me stuff and grab dudes with helicopters. Well, what more do you need at this point? Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just develop some stuff. Uh, there is a crap load of stuff to develop in this game. Uh, to the point where we, we probably won't see all of it in the LP, because after a while <laughs> it's just like, oh, fucking sweet, it's a sniper rifle, but a bit better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there, there is a lot of cool stuff he can develop. Um, but yeah, we, we have enough GMP in the bottom right corner there to make everything, so we'll just get a pistol, a rifle, a s fucking sawed-off shotgun, a sniper rifle... Uh, flare grenades, which you use to call in the helicopters to a specific point to, like, fuck stuff up. Mm -hmm. uh, smoke grenades, C4, and Desert Fox camo. I love the idea of researching a sawed-off shotgun. Just all 14 <laughs> of your guys staring hmm. at a shotgun, and then one picks up a hacksaw, and the other Ooh. 13 flip out. Oh, shit! It's... R&D team at Mother Base is basically people constantly reinventing the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> like, before they could even make cardboard, they had to invent things. They had to invent paper first. It's real hard growing a tree on a floating strut. <laughs> Alright, uh, so missions, we'll just go in order here. Uh, the first one, uh, here's way. Farming villages in southern Vahan have been subjected to a strategic bombing campaign the past several weeks. The damage is spreading. It's part of the Soviet scorched earth operation aimed at wiping out the guerrillas. The target this time is the commander of a Spetsnaz detachment. He's been key to the operation's success. People say this guy's responsible for annihilating the Mujahideen at Tsmasi Laman, the Hamid fighters, overnight. He's a tough, experienced commander. Don't underestimate him. The order from my client in the West is to shoot on sight. They want him out of the picture for good. Sorry, boss. This one's purely business. Wet work. A hit on a commanding officer of the Soviet military. Nothing personal. We're only doing this because it gets us one step closer to our goal. If we gotta get wet, I'll do it. I'm so fucking pissed off. Get real wet. So, uh, for a lot of missions, there's multiple points you can start from. Uh, we'll be doing both. Uh, with Big Boss and, uh, Venom Snake. Big Boss will start further away. So over here. Uh, no Vapor Snake this time. I guess technically Vapor Snake doesn't exist anymore because he ended his mission with a time paradox. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. We erased that asshole. Now it's only He's gone. Sneak Dad and Direct Dad. Yeah. Uh, so for Big Boss, most of the equipment we have will just be keeping. Uh, although we are going to replace hand grenades, smoke grenades. Mm hmm. Um. So he, <laughs> in remembrance of his fallen son. Uh-huh. Uh, so everything you bring also costs a certain amount every time you go on a mission. Um, 
You can see uh, on the, the bottom left, it doesn't just cost money, it also costs some, some common metal to use. So that's the, those are those resources I've been picking up every once uh. in a while. Uh, we can also select our buddy, but unfortunately Snake's only <gasps> buddy is a horse. What do you mean, unfortunately? That's the best buddy <laughs> you can have. Snake has no other buddies in his life, just this horse. They're majestic, peaceful creatures <laughs> that seem to be allergic to themselves. Yeah. Uh, you can also bring vehicles in with you if you have any. Um, I mean, I have a horse. <laughs> I'll just keep the horse. Uh, and also, you can select different camo. You can also select different versions of the camo. We're going to go with the one that's got a scarf. Ooh. Scarves mean stealth, I think. Uh, and then with Venom Snake, we're just going to upgrade to most of the the new things we developed. Uh, so bringing a sniper rifle, um, C4, and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also uh, some other stuff we'll be able to do uh, eventually uh, with our uh, cyborg arm. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to equip some cyborg arms later on that do some really dumb stuff. <laughs> Welcome to Metal Gear. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, no scarf for him. <gasps> Scarves for dumb idiots. If you don't wear a scarf, how are people on, like, CNBC supposed to know <laughs> that you really are in the Middle East? <laughs> uh, also, yeah, you can deploy at different times. So Big Boss will be going just before night, and Venom Snake will go right in the morning. Chicago Calais, it's a three-star restaurant. I love that it says it guest starring the Spetsnaz Commander. The first couple of missions here, once you get out of like the intro of the game, are just more just normal jobs they take, not particularly story-centric uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. But they're they're also pretty neat. They, since they're not main story missions, they're also a lot quicker to finish. <laughs> also, since Big Boss's helicopter got here first, let's go with him. We can use compounds from plants to make <laughs> Although a thing I think is funny is like, you know, Ocelot gave you some tutorial messages when he would do a thing for the first time, but now that Miller's here, he also wants to do that? I don't know if the other guy told you, but I'm just so damn angry that I'm not gonna ask him. <sighs> <sighs> And yeah, the, the, that white border on the map is like, if you walk out of there for too long, the mission ends. Uh, this is where we went to get info on where Miller was in the first mission, though. Oh. So that's where we are in, in relation to that. The target is camped out in that village, dressed as an ordinary soldier. Um, also, when you usually have to kill a specific target, they usually have a photo of him. So there he is. He's got a red beret. Oh yeah, that's memorable. Sure, <laughs> why not? He looks so distinct. Uh, but before we go there, there's another guard post over here. Guard posts are good to uh, go to just because they're they're pretty lightly guarded. There's always dudes there to kidnap. Uh, if you take everybody out in an outpost, you will unlock more words for your, for uh, making emblems. Oh, yes, fat fat. <laughs> Truth is, an environmental NGO has asked us to remove wild animals from combat zones. If you have the time, can you extract some back here? There's a reward in it for us. Yeah, so we won't be doing it this mission, but you can collect animals in this game. Ooh. So eventually we'll start collecting some animals. Go back to Cuba and get your little rat buddy. Also, this outpost is super easy. It's just two guys who take an extremely long smoke break. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Well, you know, back then, cigarettes were much bigger. Yeah. They're extremely long, like footlongs. <laughs> they, they came with their own, like, supporting brace so they wouldn't droop. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, also, outposts usually have some other stuff you can grab. Uh, sometimes there's collectibles, like cassette tapes. Uh, this one just has some more materials to, to grab. Uh, also, I mentioned in, like, the second episode that there is a mechanic to kind of play dead. So if you're just laying down on the ground and you press Y, you go, like, really flat. You get a little bit of extra, uh, like, camo index from that. Uh, mm -hmm. doing this also makes Big Boss put his, uh, put his mouth right in front of the microphone. <laughs> he just gets real breathy. Sorry, that was me. No, oh, okay. Do you think that's really key for Sutherland heavy breathing? I wonder. I'm gonna say no. I, I bet it's actually just some stock thing. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> My fame increase from holding a man up. Also, unlike in Peace Walker, where nobody ever noticed men being balloon, uh, people become extremely distressed when they see their friends fly up into the sky. <laughs> Why didn't you invite me? <laughs> I love amusement parks. You know this. Also, like that you could just hold dudes up when they're on ladders and they can't do shit about it. Have you heard of the new ride they're putting in at Cedar Point this season? It sounds amazing. <laughs> Also, uh, if you're sprinting and whistle for your horse, uh, your horse will run up right next to you and run in parallel so that you can hop on him. Yes. Hell yes. The best horse. It's a good horse. So, there's a lot of ways you could get into this village. Uh, this place is pretty good for, like, Overlooking the whole thing, though. Your target should be somewhere in that outpost. Can you get the William Tell Overture to play on your iDroid while you gallop the horse? Yes. Can we make this happen? Uh, literally, I can because the PC version allows you to put custom music tracks in the game. Ha 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 ha. Mm hmm. Uh, they, I'll be doing some stuff with that, believe me. Everybody, give us your favorite Western soundtracks. <laughs> Oh, we got some Blinky Boys down there. Yeah. Uh, Blinky Boys are radio men. Also, it's <laughs> just now getting around nighttime with the shifts change, so here's a guy going to the Whoa, job. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to catch me slacking. There's a war on, boys. <laughs> I just caught the end of the shift change because those, those guys went to their, their posts there. Um, yeah, the Blinky Boys are radio men, so if you take them out, uh, depending where you are, people might not be able to call for help from other bases at all. Uh-huh. That's the sturdiest building in the area. It'd be perfect for the target to hold up in. Hmm. Sorry I ain't talk much lately. I've been reminding Miller all the different tips I gave you a little <laughs> while back. Plenty of grapevines there. They're not bearing fruit, but they'll still provide good cover. Yes, that famous Afghani wine. Hmm. Alright, so, uh, meanwhile, in the morning, uh, <laughs> Venom Snake dropped, dropped off way closer to the base from the get-go. Pretty much every mission has, like, a bunch of events, like, on a clock that just loop over and over. Kind of like a Hitman level or something. Mm -hmm. Um, these are generally mission-specific, like, if you were at this place just when you are running around the open world, those events wouldn't be happening. They would have their, like, own, kind of more, like, generic events that are usually going on. Right. Also, yeah, when I was going down that road a second ago, uh, there were some guys driving around in Jeeps. Those people on that Jeep are the Glowy Boys. They arrive here in the morning. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Uh, so if we just keep following the glowy boys, because they're, uh... You know, the guy we have to go after is the commander. People probably have to report to him or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, if you're something here... something commanders like. Yeah, they love that shit. So yeah, if you're here in the morning, uh, and you find those glowy boys, they actually go meet up with the commander to have some kind of talk with them. Is that him? 
Well, oh, there he is with his red beret. So we can ID the targets. Mm. So I'm far enough away uh, that I could just snipe this dude. <laughs> uh, you can. There is uh, a lot of bullet drop though. So even though I'm aiming a little bit above his head, it wasn't a headshot. Uh, thankfully, sniper rifles are still, you know, fuck you up really good. So two shots, he's done. <laughs> No enemy forces in pursuit. Mission complete. There you go. And that's how we got Bin Laden. <laughs> Mission complete, boss. Yay, look at that happy chick. Hooray. So yeah, Venom Snake got that done super quick. Three minutes. Uh, meanwhile, Big Boss. He's the slow, methodical type. He's really thorough uh, when he washes the dishes. But one of these guys uh, still hasn't gone to his post of uh, manning one of the spotlights. And so many of the soldiers, so many of the Soviet soldiers love to fucking smoke. So instead <laughs> of just going up to do his job, he takes a really long smoke break. Also, these uh, night vision goggles, on top of just highlighting, you know, heat sources and other people and stuff, they also highlight things you can interact with, so that's an easy way oh, to find yeah. cracks. Climb and crack. I can't wait for, like, the, the cartoon adaptation of Metal Gear Solid 5. <laughs> have to replace all the smoke breaks with, like, playing solitaire. Yeah, they're like... They can't take... They, they can barely paint over the cigarettes, so they always have to put, like, walkie-talkies on there instead. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, those Soviet soldiers are just so chatty. Oh, so yeah, you can just easily knock dudes out if you just drop on them. Just, just jump on their heads. Like Mario does. Mm-hmm. Oh, these guys look a bit more like Olimar, uh, <laughs> if you're being particular. Yeah. Uh, I took this guy out a little bit further to strap a balloon onto him so that the entire base of people wouldn't be like, What? A balloon. You gotta extract him. Also, I don't know why Miller, half the time when you extract people, he sounds like, really, that guy? You're gonna <laughs> extract him? I mean, if you say so. Also, here's another fast travel sticker thing. He's really nervous about being replaced, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. He's been away for nine, he's been out of your life for nine years, he mm -hmm. doesn't know where he stands anymore. <laughs> He was hoping you'd talk about your relationship, but then, no, no, I'm just gonna go hop in my, uh, helicopter. I gotta do work, I'm sorry. And we're out. Look, Miller, I know you that you're just constantly, you feel no other emotion but being really pissed off. <laughs> you're, you're a 10 out of 10 pissed off mood right now. Uh, but with the way I cope with this stuff, yeah, I do this shit. Just playing pranks on smoking men. Mm-hmm. Jumping on their heads. Checking out the Afghani grapevines. <laughs> I heard it through the Afghani grapevine, yes. <laughs> that classic hit that has no scansion or meter whatsoever. <laughs> There's a decent amount of guys here, and they're all posted in places that, that make sense for the, the most part. Uh, mm -hmm. But, like, every single map usually has, like, one area in it where it's like, oh, there's never anybody here, and this is one of them. <laughs> um, also, when I hop over this ledge, I bump a wicker basket. <gasps> they can hear that. <laughs> Every physics object you knock, they can, they can hear you, like, knocking around. Even if it's something really light that doesn't really make that much noise. If a Soviet soldier listens to the kids in America, is that ironic? <laughs> are they are they having a laugh? What is this? This guy's gonna come check out that noise, which means he has to go, uh, walk right by. Uh, also... Whoop! Don't zoom the camera in. You'll bop your head. <laughs> Just like in Metal Gear Solid 2. Very tactical. One of the most tactical takedowns I've ever seen. 
Yeah, if as long as there is a soldier really close to the the door of the porta potty, when you open the door, uh, you will rocket out of it. Whoa! Oh, there he is. Whoa. And he's getting so sleepy. This was used as a lullaby in many homes. <laughs> I like when he lays down in the bed, he puts his gun where his pillow should be. And yeah, he is going to sleep with this song fucking blaring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad that uh, the Phantom Pain and Riverdale have at least one thing in common. <laughs> Yeah, soldiers do have sleep schedules. This guy goes to bed at a normal time, so... Yes. Soldiers. <laughs> Brothers. In this one moment. We are one. Yes. Big boss. More like Big Spoon. <laughs> I'm always the Big Spoon. Never the Little Spoon. Well, yeah, ever since he killed the boss, he's only <laughs> been the Big Spoon. <laughs> she used to be the Big Spoon. <laughs> she would swallow, swaddle him up in a giant blanket and then rock him to sleep Aww. on Bikini Atoll. <laughs> That's the target. Looks like we found him. Yeah, she would do that in between him getting nuked. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing that kept him sane. Just an adult man-sized uh, uh, rocking crate. <laughs> All right, this guy is asleep, but I can't pick him up because then he would just wake up. So let's make him double asleep. Whoa. Yeah, it's the ambient of the 80s. <laughs> I say it would be a waste to kill him, but putting him to sleep doesn't count as eliminating him. Neither does knocking him out. And also, yeah, it says 0% for Fultoning. Uh, you cannot, unlike Peace Walker, you cannot Fulton people if there is something above their heads. The balloon will hit it and it will pop. Like, there, there is a little bit of leeway where it's like, oh, there's a little bit of like an overhang or something. Like, they'll clip mm -hmm. through it, but when there's a whole ceiling... Also, give me that tape. Uh, yeah, but as, as long as there's something pretty big above them, they will, you will never be able to fault them. Yeah, you'll have to move them elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And since I'm leaving, uh, I'll just freak everybody out just for the heck of it. <laughs> well, he's a he's a loyal guy. He wants to stay with his CO. Mm -hmm. I do like the idea that you know the U.S. or, or whatever we vague Western <laughs> power. Give yeah. me this job. Wants this guy dead. But you play by your own rules. Yeah, totally. Uh, anytime you get a mission where it's like, hey, this scumbag needs to die, you can just not kill him and you can just make him work for you instead. Yeah. Well, if he's our scumbag, he's not in your hair anymore. So it's it's all good. Like Miller said, he's like, man, be ashamed <laughs> to waste that dude. <laughs> We need more evil scumbags in our private army. It's almost like you're the bad guy. <laughs> we'll just, uh, we'll take him. Add him to our collection. Target secured. I'll tell the client we sent the target to a place outside of heaven. You know, this outside of heaven thing really has a good ring to it. <laughs> I don't know, I think we could shave a few syllables. <laughs> And yeah, then to just finish the mission, we just have to walk out of the mission zone. That's it. You've made it out of the hot zone. No sign of the enemy. Mission complete, boss. What a good horse. Congratulations. You're the real kid in America. <laughs> yes. Mission complete. Boss, that was exceptional. So yeah, there's a bunch of bonuses I got. Still an A rank, though, just because the, the, the time it is such a huge part of your score. Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, for the Venom Snake run, we did it in three minutes, and we got like over 120,000 points instead of 68,000. <laughs> so, yeah, we still got an A, even though we got all those bonuses for like perfect stealth, no kills, no enemy combat yeah, alerts, all that. You're still a pretty cute chick. Mm-hmm. Totally. 
Also, there's a meter in the bottom left that says that indicates my bond level with my horse. That hasn't gone up yet, but trust me, you can become better friends with your horse. We'll see what that does later. Also, I like that you make a little bit of money at the end of every mission for how much batteries you have mm -hmm. left. <laughs> well, yeah, those uh, those mushrooms don't grow here. Yeah. How you feeling, boss? Getting used to being in the field again? Having choppers and a horse at your disposal is indispensable for operating in the wilds of Afghanistan. I've gone ahead and arranged for you to be able to develop and customize weaponry for support choppers. And you can also develop new equipment for D-Horse if you like. Use your iDroid to start development as needed. So if you've ever wanted a game where you can get extremely tactical with your horse, well... <laughs> also, special volunteers! Time to uh, play some gallop and ride. <laughs> He's a B rank for R and D, and he has a real dumb tattoo. Uh, so Gold Fox, and also his. <laughs> this just goes to show that there's more than one kind of intelligence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he also brings his friend Amber Fox. These two are special <laughs> recruits you get early in the game if you had pre-ordered the game, I guess. Oh. Also, we got an elite soldier. Uh, this is the uh, the guy we were supposed to kill. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Silent Mastodon is an A-plus in combat. We don't have a combat unit yet, but he'll, he'll be He's good. like Brad Pitt from the nose up, yeah. yeah. Sly Bison, Dizzy Centipede, Fire Hog, Rabid <laughs> Slug, Rapid Hippo. I don't think... I, I guess all mammals can get rabies, I think? Yeah. So I, I guess? Mm. I might be wrong. Hmm. Oh, we already got so many new friends. They're all pretty dumb, but they're nice. <laughs> <laughs>